his ring, Examiner. I believe that's our ring. I had no good alarm. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum's air raid warden activities haven't revealed any strange airplanes flying over Pine Ridge, but they did disclose a puzzling incident involving Diogenes Smith. While Mousy was on guard duty during the night, he saw Diogenes hand a large package of his pamphlets to someone in an automobile and receive from Mo- some money in exchange. It was too dark for Mousy to identify the man or the car but he did get the license number, and that turned out to be the number on Cedric's car. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library that Lum has just entered. Listen. Well, it's about time you was getting to work, Lum. Where have you been? Oh, I've been in bed sleeping. Sleeping? Yeah. You can't expect a man to work all day long and watch for our planes all night. Oh, well, are you watching... Uh, for airplanes last night? Yeah. Yeah, war to a frazzle, too. <laughs> war to a frazzle. Well, I, I thought you pointed Ezra Seastonk to do the watching last night. I did, but Ezra called me up after I'd went to bed and told me he couldn't do it because his woman wouldn't believe that he could, he's just going to sit up all night and watch for our planes. Oh, for the land sakes. I believe that's the specialist one woman I ever knowed in my life. Just hates to let Ezra get out of her sight. Either. Yeah, I know. Well, I ought to recollect that before ever I pinted Ezra. Yeah, well, why didn't you call up Mousy Gray and get him to watch again? He told me he sort of likes that. Yeah, I thought about calling him, but all he does is just bring in a report telling how many hoot owls hooted during the night. Yeah, he gets them all right. Besides, I sort of wanted to keep an eye on things myself. I wanted to see if Diogenes and Cedric was doing any more secret business. Oh, uh, did, did you find out anything? No, no, nothing happened. Hmm. Huh. Dodge and he's never done any printing in his workshop last night, even. He never? No. Uh, all that happened was that the mail plane went over at the regular time, and that hoot owl kept hooting at me all night long. That bird gets on my nerves. Well, Mouse, he said he liked it. said he's just like a mother to him, he yeah. said. <laughs> no. I think he must be suffering from one of them mother complexes I've heard about. But that don't solve the mystery about Cedric. No. Did you trail him after you closed up the store like I told you to? Yeah, yeah, I trailed him a little. Did you wear that disguise so he wouldn't recognize you? Yeah, I, I put on that black mustache and followed him clean from Frank Foster's gasoline station, plum over to his place. Then I hid behind a tree and watched the house there for a while. Yeah, then what happened? Well, Cedric come out again, and this time I, he had on a black mustache, too. That one he got with his junior detective section on, he said he'd follow me for a while. For goodness sake. So we took turns following one another, and I got over and went home for supper. Elizabeth was awful mad at me for getting home so late. Fine detective you make, that's all I got to say. How? Uh, didn't find out a single specious thing about Cedric. Well, Lom, I don't see why we got to go through all this silly stuff. Why don't we just come right out flat-footed and ask Cedric what he was doing talking to Dodge and he's at 2 o'clock in the morning like Mousy said he was. Well, we can't do that, Abner. Hmm. Cedric's one of them deputies. One of the deputies? Well, I'm sure of that now that he's been holding these secret meetings with Diogenes. Oh. If we start asking Cedric a lot of questions, he'll report everything direct to Diogenes. Sure, sure, sure. And then we would never stand no chance of winning this $10,000 honesty prize. No. Of course, Diogenes will find out we're trailing Cedric anyway, Long. That fella even knows what you're thinking about, I believe. Yeah, he does appear to know my not everything. Oh, be anything I ever seen. You know, Abner, I wouldn't want him to hear me say this, because I know he's a good man and all, but lately he sort of gives me the creeps when he looks me straight in the eye. Well, sure, he does me too, huh? Does he show him? Oh, yeah. I still think we ought to just ask Cedric what he's doing the other night. Maybe he was just getting back from coon hunting or something like that. Yeah, but why would Dodge and he be giving him them packages of pamphlets? Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Well, maybe it weren't even Cedric. Mousy never actually seen who was in the car alone. He wrote down the license number, and it was Cedric's license, wasn't it? No, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah I can't understand it. Cedric don't seem smart enough to be studying enough ways to get my circulating manager job away from him. No. And I know he ain't smart enough to pay out money to try to get it. Well, maybe the money was for something else, Lum. 
Maybe he just won them pamphlets, so he just buying them from Diogenes. Well, why would he want to buy something he can get for nothing? Huh? Diogenes gives them things away. Yeah, well, you know, Cedric, he don't know no better than to pay for them all. No, that ain't it, Abner. I know that an honest fellow like Diogenes wouldn't take advantage of Cedric that way. No. No, sir, there's something else at the bottom of all this. Something curious. Well, I think the thing to do is just to ask Cedric. I believe that's the best way for us to get out of it. You do? Yes, sir, I do. Well, maybe you're right after all. We could sort of ask some subtile questions so he wouldn't know exactly what we were getting at. Why, sure. You want me to try to get him on the phone? I reckon so. Yeah, call him. Better call over to the blacksmith shop. I don't think he'd be home this time of day. Blacksmith shop? Uh, What's that ring over there, Long? I forget. It's wrote down there by the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, Blacksmith shop. Tell Cedric he left something over here. Left something? (laughs) Yeah, make up something. His lantern. No, he's more than likely got that with him. Oh, yeah. He don't go no place without that lantern. Just tell him that we want to see him about something important. Yeah, I'll tell you. Oh, wait a minute. Hello? Caleb? Yeah, this is Abner Peabody. Wonderful world, Caleb. Wonderful. Oh, excuse me. Oh, tolerably. Uh, Caleb, will you tell Cedric we want to see him about something important? Hmm. Uh, whereabouts is he at? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, if he comes in, well, I'll tell him to drop over the store as soon as he can. All right, Caleb, thank you. Goodbye, Art. Wonderful world. Hmm. He ain't there, huh? No, Caleb ain't seen him all day. Said he might be over to Luke Spears' restaurant. Yeah, more than likely that's about where he's at. Spends most of his time over there playing that pinball machine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, try the restaurant one. Yeah, I'm just looking for the ring. Yeah, yeah, here it is, here it is, here it is. Luke was telling me that long as Cedric's been playing that machine over there, he ain't never won on it. Once, even. Well? Snaps that little handle so hard, he tilts the machine right now every time. <laughs> uh, hello, Luke? Uh, this is Abner Peabody. Say, Luke, huh? Oh, wonderful world, Luke. Uh, Luke, is Cedric over there? Have you saw him any place today? That's funny. Ask him to look across the street and see if he can see him sitting in the gas station, Abner. Can you see him sitting over there at the gas station, Luke? Can you see him? He's looking now. Huh? Huh? Yeah, huh? Well, if you see him, Luke, why, well, tell him to come over to the store. Or, now, if you see anybody has for him or knows where he's at, why, well, tell them to tell Cedric to tell them where he's at so that he can tell... Or, what am I trying to say? Better hang up, Abner. You're getting yourself mixed up. Yeah, well, you know what I mean, Luke. All right. Wonderful world. Yeah. Hmm. That's funny. Nobody saw Cedric today. Yeah, he's always at one of them places. I bound you I know where he's at. Where? He's just about making a trip to Little Rock or Fort Smith or maybe even Kansas City. Kansas City? Yes, sir. That's where Dodge and he said he might send me someday when I used to be circulating manager for him. Used to be? Ain't you still circulating manager? Don't look very much like it. Not with Cedric traipsing off to Kansas City. I dog, is that right, yeah. I hope that Cedric don't get lost up there. That Kansas City's an awful big place for a boy like him to be running around by himself. And serve him right if he does. I just can't understand Cedric doing an underhanded thing like this to me. He always seemed like such a good boy. Yeah, yeah. Always give some of his money to his mama and all such as that. Here he is stealing my job right out from under behind my back, and I, I'm not looking at him all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a talk with that snake in the weeds. Just wait till he gets back from Kansas City. That is, if he ever does get back. Now, sir, it's just hard to believe that about Cedric Long. I reckon what he ever done a thing like this for? Oh, it's plain enough to me. It's just like that old letter saying of mine, money's the roots of all evil. Money in the roots? You mean he's got some money buried on her? No, I mean he take my job just so he could get himself in good with Dodge and ease and win that $10,000 honesty prize. Oh, oh, I see. That's the money he's going to bury, huh? Don't he think the bank's safe? Well, I reckon he does. I never said he's going to bury no money. Well, you did. You said something about money in the roots. I never done no such a thing. I said mouthy is the roots of all evil, or money is the roots of all evil. Oh, well, I reckon that's different. That's the money is the roots. Huh? Er. Wait a minute, how could money be roots, Lon? You must have that wrong no, somewhere. No, I ain't got it wrong. What I'm, wasn't that our ring just now? I never paid no attention. Well, I hope it is. Huh? 
If Roots was money, well, I could just have Elizabeth dig up a big batch Hello. of them things. Hello, jot them down, store and library. Air raid warden Lum Edwards talking. Wonderful world. They got that big oak tree over there. Oh, hello, Cedric. Granny, is you back from Kansas City already? He did make a quick trip. You never? Well, where are you at, Cedric? Well, for goodness sake. <laughs> well, of course, we'll come right over and help you. Over to Kansas City? Well, what in the world are you doing there? Well, I do know. Oh, we are. Didn't you notice they has gone till today? Well, you ought to take more notice of such things. Well, don't worry, Cedric. One of us will come right down there. I want to go along. All right, Cedric. Kansas City. Goodbye. Wonderful world. Oh, what's the matter, Long? My granny, I was wrong about Cedric. But now I'm mixed up more than ever. Well, what happened? Cedric's in jail. In jail? What for? Uncle Henry Lunsford arrested him for driving his car without no license plates on it. Well, I do know. Cedric ought to know better than to take his license plates off. He never taken them off. Well, who did? Somebody stole them. Huh? If we can find out who stole them license plates, we'll know who was buying them pamphlets from Diogenes the other night. I don't think it was Cedric. This sort of illuminates me. <laughs>